Okay, again, welcome everybody on this Friday afternoon. Thanks for joining us um, for our little impromptu meeting with the principal. So he's gonna give us some updates today. And we always appreciate you doing that, Max. So I'm gonna turn it over to you. Thank Thanks. you, Barbara. I uh, appreciate you uh, putting this together on relatively short notice. Um, the members of our parent community, uh, welcome. I hope that you're staying warm and that despite all the stresses of the world right now that you're continuing to socially distance and be safe and uh, make the most of, of the quarantine in this pandemic. So um, a couple items that I'll go over today will address exactly that. And um, some other updates as we've now ended term one uh, and are moving into term two. So give me just one moment as I share a screen. Uh, give me a quick thumbs up if you can see. Cool. Let's do this thing. So a lot of information. It's a little text heavy on the front end. Apologies. Um, just so you know, our teachers are submitting all of their grades on Monday, close of business. Um, there is a window of time where should a teacher choose, they can accept work late from a student who wasn't um, passing a course or who wanted to submit work for a higher grade. That is entirely the teacher's prerogative and the marking period, again, has already ended. Um, I did send out a notification to all students and families that this past Wednesday at 3 p.m. was the cutoff because we had to give our um, faculty time to grade uh, and time to update their grade books. Um, but again, it's an individual teacher's prerogative if they choose to accept work later. We have encouraged all of our faculty to be as flexible as possible. Um, tomorrow is the last day of Saturday school for uh, for the fall term. And for those uh, students who have not come through um, or have come through in limited capacity, it's still not too late. Our Saturday school, our teachers are on from 10 to one, myself included, to help resolve students' grades from the uh, spring summer of 2020. Um, I'm gonna include a, a huge amount of information about our performance in term one, as well as what we can look forward to in term two for our school-wide data during the PTA meeting, which I believe is coming up on the fourth. Is that right, Barbara? Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so we got a gift today from uh, the central office in the form of new academic policy. In, in ways it is a legitimate gift for some. Uh, there are some students who even despite our Saturday school program, are still not on track to pass those classes by tomorrow. And if those, uh, the, those students and their families request an appeal from the school, the school will then vouch for the family based on criteria that will be sent to those students and their families. And, um, and then there will most likely be an extension for students to resolve those uh, grades that are, those classes, excuse me, that are still in progress. Um, as that information becomes publicly available, we will let everybody know. But our goal is, of course, to make sure that as many students pass Saturday school tomorrow, right, as possible. And then for anyone who isn't able to get across that finish line in that timely fashion, we're going to um, move on to the next step, which is appealing for more time. And our hope is that those students don't need um, much more time than what they have been allotted. Part of our uh, focus on doing little harm through our grading policy is that our academic policy committee um, unanimously, unanimously excuse me, voted to average the two highest marking period grades as the final grade for term one. We had been talking about this. I know I had brought it up to our school leadership team, to our PTA. I will say that when it was brought up prior, it had not been an established and fully voted and agreed upon thing. I think there was some misunderstanding. Some folks thought it was already a done deal and it was not but it is now with some caveats. The first is that it only applies to term one. We don't wanna set an expectation for our young professionals that we're simply just going to drop the lowest marking period grade in the future. And the reason being because if that's the case, then it gives someone license to say, well, I'm simply not going to work this marking period, right? I won't do it the first one or I get the last marking period off. It doesn't work that way in the professional world. And so it's not gonna work that way for us. Um, but we do want to be flexible to the, the level of performance that a student is demonstrating over time. Um, we are going to notify the entire school community that we made this decision within the next uh, working day. And we waited because we didn't want to let folks know well in advance that uh, we were averaging the highest two marking periods because we still felt it was important for students to work consistently through the end of the term. 
Of course, that's not going to change the fact that priority assignments are still going to be messaged to all students um, two weeks prior to the end of the marking period going forward. OK, so those are just a little updates around our academic policy and grading policy. OK, SATs. Um, folks, the SATs are still happening. And according to the College Board, they're still happening in person. So right now, there's been no alternative created for the SATs to be administered in a remote or fully digital context, meaning that we as a school must host the 11th grade in the building. Now, I know that some families are going to say, not my child. And we understand that, OK? Um, however, unless we are given an alternative, this is the model with which we're working. So our plan right now is to administer the SATs to two separate groups, the first on March 3rd, the second on uh, March 24th. The makeup dates are going to be April 13th and April 27th, respectively. Um, we, these are the only four days we're allowed to use, by the way. So we have to use all, of them, especially because we have such a large number of students uh, that have testing accommodations, OK? Um, for this administration, we're breaking up those two groups by alpha order, right? Your A through M's and your M through Z's, respectively. It may not be straight down the middle like that, but it'll be close. And during these days of SAT administration, they're going to have to be asynchronous learning days because we're going to be utilizing a large number of our staff to supervise uh, classroom spaces um, in which our young professionals will be taking the SAT exam. Some will be taking the exam for the entire day. Now, here's an, a new update from the DOE that I know Janine was kind enough to send out to all families within the last uh, 48 hours. And it's that any student that returns to the building for any reason must have a completed consent form to testing prior to entry. Now, this isn't the same form that your young professional filled out when they just walked into the building for blended learning in the uh, fall. OK, that was just a health screening form that's mandated for anyone who's walking into a DOE building anyway. The consent form is literally consent to be tested for COVID. And it's mandatory not only for students if they're going to be inside a building, but also for any members of our faculty. So it's not a double standard for students. It's everyone in the building. OK. Um, right. And, and one quick note is that we started an SAT prep program uh, after school. It's called A-List Prep. It's actually a program that the school pays for. Uh, we have 106 students who applied. And just about every one of those students has been enrolled. Uh, there are a couple students, I'm going to tell you, who, when we ask them, because it's, you know, it's a screened process, right? Why did you uh, elect to take on this SAT prep program? Some said, I really don't want to do this. My parents put me up to it. And, I'm, and I'll be frank, uh, I appreciate family support and encouragement, but student voice is the most important voice. And so if a, a, one of our young professionals says, I'm here against my will, that's not going to fly for us. We can have a conversation with them and the whole family about enrollment in the SAT program, but we can't have it be under those pretenses. OK, um, a lot of folks in our, our PTA have talked about what are we doing to uh, create school culture right, and get students together. So uh, today we had a freshman virtual mixer. Um, it was from three to four. We had about 60 of our freshmen show up, which is not bad for. And I know it's OK. It's a, yeah, it's a Google Meet. No, they're not physically in one space. Legally, you couldn't even get 60 people in one space. So we consider this a victory. Um, they were talking a lot about what their majors were going to be going into next year, where they saw themselves, what they were enjoying so far, what they were struggling with so far. It was candid. Um, in the words of Ms. Johnson, they were very chatty. And um, Mr. Familia, who is our school's COSA, facilitated the meeting and uh, will be doing so for, for future meetings uh, held more frequently for our, our freshmen and other grades. Now, we also had another competition for our senior students to talk about their life uh, in quarantine. And um, we got our submissions. They were due today. The top three we found, uh, based on the criteria, were from Brittany, Michelle, and Layla. Fantastic pieces. Um, they represent student state of mind. Uh, degrees of involvement, right, and sort of the routine uh, of, of their lives. And they're very honest, you know, art and design students as true artists uh, lay their souls bare. And Layla's piece on the right, this 12-panel uh, captioned um, cartoon speaks volumes, I think, about a lot of what of us are, we're, we're going through, uh, whether adult or student. Um, and, you know, when we see these pieces, it's like, okay, that breaks my heart. It, it does. Um, but it also, it kind of lifts me up. I'm like, yeah, good sense of humor. You got it. 
And also, you know, we can take this concern, if it's a concern, and we can work with it. But more importantly, it's a point of empathy and connection for Layla and, our others, and uh, her peers. Um, this piece was done by Michelle, uh, obviously in oils. And although small speaks, it, it gives me, um, oh goodness, I forget the data as painter and now it's now it escapes me of course, but I get data vibes from what I'm seeing here. So moving on, um, a couple updates about the budget. So I have decided that uh, art and design is going to pay for all senior dues this year. Not a single senior due will have to fall on the, the responsibility of families or seniors to cover. That includes cap and gown, yearbook, t-shirts and sweats, diploma cases, and all the other associated uh, costs. Some, some folks are saying, well, senior dues typically include a venue for graduation. This is true. I don't yet know what the city is going to say about graduation venues, but we'll do what we can when we can. And we're already having discussions in senior um, event committee about what, how to hold in-person graduations divided by major. Okay, so that is happening. The conversation's happening. The logistics are a different story, but we're working on it. Um, we have some new tech coming into the building, six new carts of MacBooks, uh, new screens for the cafeteria. We're refurbishing with new technology, six of our computer labs, uh, including animation, photography, architecture, um, graphic design. Uh, we're really, really excited. And, these, and some of these um, Macs that we're purchasing are custom. So we went through the specs needed to uh, literally line up for multiple programs running simultaneously that match professional standard. And we all knew that the, the DOE base model wasn't gonna cut it. So we were able to work out a custom order with Apple and we're able to put that order through this coming Monday. Uh, we also wanted to make sure that we had more mobile smart boards and some, one of those nicer ones, you know, like on hydraulic lifts for helping presentation, especially when it comes time for fanfare or other events in the school where we can collaborate with and support our uh, entire community for their presentation needs. Um, I'm having a conversation with folks at Airlight. I don't know if uh, anyone here has heard of them. They are a company that produces a special paint whose titanium oxide uh, based pigment, when in contact with sunlight and CO2 converts carbon dioxide to oxygen. Um, they're, they're famous for doing a few pieces, primarily in Europe. There's uh, one in Rome, another one in Venice. Um, that focus, one, on images around social justice and equality, but two, um, are painted large enough and displace enough CO2 to substitute the same effectiveness uh, by square foot as a forest of the same size. It's really cool stuff. And so, you know, the, the question that comes up for us is we're moving next year into a hydroponics-based science study for biology. Um, and possibly AP Chem and our rooftop as well. So how can we work sustainability into other methodologies around our artistic creation? And this would be a fun thing to do. It may be very expensive, so we'll see what it looks like. Uh, lastly, we, we did ask all of our clubs if they needed supplies or equipment. Um, most have said they're good, but some have made special requests and we have enough money in our budget to cover that. Uh, we also had our, our Gay Straight Alliance and our Women's United Clubs both win uh, grants from the city for additional um, uh, supply monies and special requests. So we're very proud of Mr. Talon and very proud of Ms. Staten O'Brien and Ms. Lannon for their work. Um, we did kick off uh, our partnership with Roundabout Theater for spring. We are moving ahead with the partnership with BBDO for most of our art departments. We have agreed to a presidential partnership with Monroe College, which would um, fast track our students into a extremely um, competitive, but also extremely cost-effective university matriculation with an art minor that we're trying to tie into SVA. Um, so that's part of an ongoing negotiation. And I mentioned dual enrollment in the past, and right now we're trying to figure out exactly which courses we're going to uh, prototype for our dual enrollment model going into next year, but that's happening. Um, Mentors in Residence is our mentoring program. That's kicking off next week, where, again, different members of our faculty will be paired off with a group of students who have historically struggled, at least through the first term of this year, and they're going to have that one-to-one -one support on a weekly basis. Um, and then we also have our NHS students earning their community service hours through peer tutoring and peer mentorships, which are organized uh, by our NHS advisor, Ms. Hawkins, in support from our APO, uh, Ms. Perez, and Ms. Daly, our AP of Guidance. Um, we're thrilled about that because those students are, are pushing into tutoring sessions and helping out uh, their peers directly. And we know that a lot of us are having difficulty connecting with our students right now. 
the peer-to-peer -peer voice might be one of the most important ones that we can leverage. Uh, lastly, for folks who are about to ask, I don't know when we're going back to the building. Um, the mayor has spoken about a gradual return for middle schools, so that's promising. Um, we don't even have enough vaccines, right? We have to be real with ourselves. Uh, but my hope is that we'll have some updates uh, by the midwinter recess, which is the week of what February 12th right through the 19th. Um, if you feel good about what's going on with the school or you have uh, criticisms to share, either way, we would really appreciate it if you filled out the, um, the fall 2020 school experience survey. I know that Janine had sent that out to uh, the parent community. Janine, thank you for that. Uh, it's important that we get uh, a fair number of responses. Last, uh, last year, I think on aggregate, we got 500 responses. We were a school of 1,500 students. So to get that low response concerns me because I want to know that we're listening to all of our parents' voices uh, when it comes to how we can make the school a better place for our young professionals. And that's it for the presentation. Um, I know there's probably a few questions that popped up on the side uh, and I will do my best to get, them, get through those quickly. So I saw some great jobs that everyone worked by the way. A quick uh, brief side note, and thank you so much for asking, uh, Selma, is that my, my mother-in-law is at home. She's on oxygen, but she's recovering. And, um, and my entire in-laws are all, we're coming together, right, uh, to support uh, that part of the family. But the road to recovery, unfortunately, with coronavirus is inconsistent for everybody. And for her, it's, it's slow. Um, but I appreciate you asking. Um, PSATs, thank you. Thank you. PSATs um, have actually been, uh, are, are being, the city has asked us to not administer the PSATs. That is directly from the chancellor's office. It says don't give the PSATs to 10th graders. Um, so the way that we are going to have to address this going ahead is by setting up um, SAT prep programs, right, Th at the very least through summer and then into next year so that we can get a better sense diagnostically of how our 10th grade and soon to be 11th grade will perform. Um, if you haven't been notified if that your young professional uh, was accepted into SAT prep, I want you to reach out to Miss Michelle Daly, okay? That's our AP of guidance. It's mdaily6 at schools. Janine, could you uh, toss that email in the chat when you get a chance? Thank you. Um, do all 11th graders take the SAT? They're supposed to, and the school pays for it, okay? Um, if you weren't able to get in uh, to the mixer today for ninth grade, I'm sorry about that. We are gonna be holding more, okay? I saw that pop up a couple of times. Um, da, 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 and let's see. Yeah. Someone's asking about freshman events, but those are the mixers. And I think I heard uh, Janine say that there will be more and others for them to join. Yeah, yeah. Um, someone is saying uh, they feel they don't have a voice. Uh, what's that? I mean, a lot about yeah. the mixers. A lot. There's a few about the mixer, so um, they'll have some. Right. Money. So. So the good news is that we are now like fully in the in the swing of, of digital events. You know, my apologies. We should have kicked these off a bit sooner. Obviously, it would have been better for for everybody. Um, we I think we attempted a few throughout the fall, and they just weren't well attended and maybe not well marketed internally. But we have um, we're making some progress there. So uh, if there's no no major questions right now uh, besides that. I will be at the, uh, the PTA meeting on Thursday with updates in terms of student performance data and how we're moving towards our school goals. I'll have things a little bit more elaborated upon um, mm -hmm. from some of my points in this meeting. And, um, and just know that if you have questions or concerns, you can always reach out to me directly. I made it my business to get folks in contact with the right APs or other people who are supervising elements of school programs after our last PTA meeting. And this is no exception. Take one last question. I see a really long question there. Are seniors <laughs> able to get help paying for senior photos? They charge 20. So we're covering the cost we're of senior photos. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, seen the, however, the photo package is a different story. So I want to clarify the difference between the two, right? Um, a recommendation that I make is if you, 
well, if you can, right, you get the, you simply get the raw photo from the, the senior photo company, which they're going to provide regardless, and then bring it yourself to another uh, studio that can probably give you a more competitive price. Um, if I can just interject, that $20 fee is a sitting fee. That's what um, most photographers uh, charge. Even if you go to like uh, JCPenney's or anything, they all have a sitting fee. That's what that $20 fee is. Right. Right. Um, any other questions? Um, you can just continue. I'll stay on for a few minutes um, and just put them into the chat. And as usual, we, we save them and forward them along to uh, the principal so that he can respond and get back to answering your questions, okay? So unless there is anything else. Two quick things I, I just saw that I'll okay. address before I hop out. One of them sure. is the mentoring programs that we've established would really benefit if they were spread more broadly beyond NHS. And I think that we're piloting this program at the moment just to make sure that it's successful but there's absolutely room for it to grow. And I don't think that just because a student isn't in NHS at the moment uh, should disqualify them from leveraging their voice uh, and their relationships. Um, Barbara asked, what's the status of the Regents exams? So I'm not the final voice on this. It has to come from the city, but I did see that New York successfully um, applied and received a waiver appeal from the federal government. And so what that means is the likelihood of June Regents happening and August Regents happening is extremely low. And in that case, students would be eligible again for Regents waivers if they pass the courses related to that um, Regents area of study. And that's my goal right now, is to make sure that everybody passes, passes through the, their own merits and their hard work with the support and intervention of our staff. I'm not one of those principals who, despite all of the, the, the horror of this pandemic, is just telling people you should just pass students. I, we, we have to maintain high expectations. We have to maintain um, a realistic outlook for when our young professionals leave this school. Because the worst thing I, I could do is, and I, I hope that you agree with me, and if not, I understand, but I don't want people to go out into this world unprepared for what they have to do next. That is a greater disservice. So we have to maintain some semblance of expectation. Um, yeah. Uh, so. As far as applying to NHS, uh, that's through Ms. Hawkins. Angel Hawkins is her name. Um, and the major process is gonna be something that students, especially in their design foundations uh, class, focus on as the year progresses. But they basically uh, complete sort of a, a reflection, right? On year one, indicate their preferred major, right? Alongside the major they originally got to A and D for, and then are placed in those respective classes. And, just, and Sandra, just so you know, NHS is National Honor Society. Um, it's a, a group of students who are uh, selected based on a, a set of criteria, academic, uh, and some attendance based, and it's also based on a, an essay that they have to write to indicate why they want to help serve the community. And they receive a special, um, a special honor. It's conferred upon them graduation, and they have to complete service hours as part of their time. So I know I'm like all over the place, but with that said... <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just hope everybody has a good weekend, um, makes the most of it. And for those of you who have young professionals in Saturday school that still need to get things done, I implore you, be there with them, 10 a.m., get them on that computer. We can do this together, but we need everyone in. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. As, as always, we really appreciate you keeping us informed on what's going on with our students and, and the school. So um, everyone, thank you for joining tonight and um, just keep putting your questions in there if you have more, but we will be having our general membership meeting on February 4th where uh, we'll get more into uh, detailed stuff, okay? Okay. Thanks again, Max. Thank you. Thanks everybody. I thanks, hope everyone Jean. stays well and has a wonderful weekend. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Bye. 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 That was nice. That was cute. <laughs>